Yo, what is up, guys? This is Troy D from the Troy D 24 7 Mall channel, your source for on point and no hype reviews. We are back yet again, everybody. We're back with another fragrance review right here, guys. And today, I will be talking about the latest Bodicia the Victorious fragrance. That's right, we're back at Bodicia. I did a review. My last review was Bodicia Iman or Faith. And a lot of people really like that review. A lot of people like this brand, especially if you are into high-end luxury niche fragrances, guys. Okay, so today we'll talk about their latest release. Why is it pretty interesting? Why did it hit my curiosity? And what is the scent about, guys? Let's go. Now, before I continue, please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys. Okay, liking, subscribing, and watching the ads is a great big deal to this channel, especially that we are pretty much 500 away to 20K, guys. So please continue the support, like, subscribe, share this video to your friends if they're curious about this scent. And uh, overall, enjoy the huge library that I have of all these scents that I've already reviewed, no hype style. And the fragrance we will be talking about today is none other than, well, this is a collaboration, guys. This is none other than Bodicia the Victorious, the Neiman Marcus exclusive, 1907 Auto Parfum. Yes, 1907 Auto de Parfum, guys. And if you're wondering what the heck 1907 is, that was the year that Neiman Marcus was born. And Neiman Marcus is not a person. <laughs> Neiman Marcus is one of the big four, big four or five luxury, like high-end uh, retailers here in America. Neiman Marcus and its brand is well known around the world for being the leaders, top tiers in luxury and luxury stores. And so is this going to spell luxury for you? Is this going to be a fragrance that's going to be complicated or simple or mainstream appealing? We're going to find out right here, guys, especially that there are a lot of very, very interesting notes in this bunch, guys. Of course, I'm the perfume whisperer. I'll tell you guys what this smells like. Let's go spray this thing right now. Woo. Okay, guys, now let's talk about Bodicea the Victorious 1907 Neiman Marcus right here, guys. So if you look at the notes on paper, they're all very, very interesting. It seems like right here in this collaboration, what they did, what Bodicea did was put in a lot of the usual suspects uh, that are like really popular notes, really beloved notes in perfumery. They almost put them all here uh, on every stage of this fragrance. But as you guys know, the actual execution will be, you know, different or it will be uh, pretty much titrated to how they do it, guys. And so that's what I'm about to tell you guys about this fragrance. Now, the opening right here has some beautiful notes, okay? You've got lemon zest, you got black currant, you got ginger, the big three of like the citrusy, uh, almost like, Tigar warming uh, combination right there. And then you also have pink pepper, cinnamon, and cardamom. Okay, <laughs> that's just truly interesting, guys, because again, you have this big three. Uh, again, lemon zest, black currant, and ginger. That's well known in spring, summer perfumes. And then you got cinnamon and cardamom, which is, you know, these are the big ones when it comes to fall, winter. Now, let me make it simple to you guys, okay? The most prominent scent right out of the gate is a combination of the lemon zest, black currant, and pink pepper, okay? And there's ginger as well that's there to provide kind of like this balanced warming presence. But the combination of the pink pepper, black currant, as well as the lemon zest, the outcome to make it really simple, is that it smells kind of like a pomelo, like a pomelo fruit. Little zesty, lemony zesty, but with a slight bitterness. And let me tell you, this one is amazing, okay? That combination of pink pepper, lemon zest, black currant, little warming ginger is sort of like a pomelo, kind of like fruity but bitter uh, type of combination right here. And this one, this pomelo smell, is pretty much what dominates this entire first part of this fragrance right here. To me, my first impression was, oh man, the mainstream is gonna love this because it comes in at a really strong blast, strong aroma, and it's fruity enough that I think the mainstream crowd 
can really see this as a very usable fragrance. But then at the same time, with the aromatics and the ginger, there's a little complexity there that puts this in the, you could say, Neiman Marcus bracket of luxurious perfumes. Now, let me tell you that with this pink fruity bitter opening right here this fruity bitter pink pomelo type opening lasts a while okay so for those that are kind of thinking that oh this lemon zest black courant and pink pepper combination is going to die because most citrusy scents they don't really last that long no this one lasts quite a while, and that makes this fragrance a first impact type of fragrance. It's actually my type of fragrance because I like fragrances that have really, really good first impressions, guys. Like first impact for the wearer, for others, and I mean, you know, look no further. You've got the lemon zest black currant, like I said, this pink pomelo blast mixed in with these really lovely, luxurious, like aromatic spices. So the spices right here, I would say ginger is the strongest and it really comes in pretty much like 10 to 15 minutes after the initial spray, after you've experienced that pink pomelo style opener, the ginger does start coming in, giving that nice warming balance. And then if you're wondering what's up with the cardamom and the cinnamon guys, okay? So these two notes, pretty much provide a low-key, kind of like stealth spice. Cardamom and cinnamon do provide this stealthy, low-key spice that later on is going to have its own continuity that I'll discuss later on in later stages of this perfume, but it is a low-key spice, guys, okay? Pretty much adding to the aromatics, the luxurious side, the warming, balanced, luxurious side of the opening right here as you are experiencing that pomelo-style pink fruity intro that is truly lovely to me. Okay, now let's talk about the initial sillage and projection, the initial performance of 1907 by Bodicea. Now, this fragrance, to me, the performance is optimal, especially in the beginning. Why? Because you have an aura scent, which is pretty much louder than just a lingering scent, but because also you have warming aromatics, it also is a draw-in scent. So it actually has a dual purpose. It can hit people from afar, but if you are close to someone, there are these warm and spicy aromatics to reel them in. And I mean, I've mentioned it a million times, fruity, blackcurrant, lemon zest, pink pepper mix is just amazing. Again, it smells like a pink pomelo. And I would say that it's different because, you know, some fragrances just have the usual bergamot, lemon bergamot combo. So this makes it different and I like it. I like that it's not gonna be your common citrusy blast. It will still have the advantages of a citrusy blast. However, it's quite different with this mix, this fruity mix right here with the aforementioned balanced aromatics. One of the nicest intros in terms of sillage and projection. Okay, now let's talk about the mid of 1907. Now, the thing about this pomelo style opener is that it feels like it's going on for a while, okay? So it has a huge coverage, more than like four hours, I'd say, or at least that's the sensation. Now, the mid right here, the key note right here that stands out the most, and it's the biggest continuity note, is going to be your violet. That's right, your conditioner-like violet, guys. Some people love it, some people hate it, but in this instance with this fragrance, guys, violet acts as a continuity note from that pink pomelo style intro, guys. And it's very, very seamless, okay? First few times that I tried this fragrance, I thought, man, the opener is still going on and on for like four or five hours. But actually, part of it is the seamless transition into this violet note supplied by Bodicea, guys. So it seems like the opener is going for hours. And so, again, this is another plus because if you liked the impactful opener, that fruity mix right there, well, it goes into the violet pretty seamlessly and you will get more of the same, guys. Now, as for the other notes, you've got, you know, cashmere. You know, you got a cashmere accord. You got some spices, guys. These are all continuity notes. And like I said from the beginning, guys, you know, that the low-key cinnamon cardamom that maybe you guys are expecting would be, 
you know, like a fall winter thing. No, it's a Loki spice, comforting spice with the ginger that goes into this cashmere accord in spices. On the mid, on top of the very prominent violet and cashmere accord, you've got thyme, you've got sage, and you've got nutmeg. Again, these provide the aromatics, the comforting aromatics that come with this fragrance that pretty much actually gets started in the beginning of the fragrance. It's just that you've got that loud pomelo uh, type opening that still goes into a kind of loud violet, guys, okay? So it's really a balance of sweetness and then comfort, you know, which I think, I mean, really mainstream or niche, you'll really, really like this combination. And I think for niche specifically, if you are into fragrances because you want them to smell luxurious and different, I mean, you won't make a mistake with this fragrance because definitely because of the mix of aromatics and comforting notes, these are really, you know, they denote luxury more than the exclamation point of the violet and the fruity notes, guys. The comforting notes definitely denote luxury and you'll get that the moment you spray this fragrance on you. Okay guys, now let's talk about the dry down of Bodice the Victorious 1907. Now when does this dry down officially start? Now based on my testing guys, the dry down started in seven hours. Seven hours. And so that is a long seven hour coverage from the opening fruity and comforting and aromatic to your comforting cashmere violet uh, and aromatic mid. That is seven hours, which is a pretty long time, guys. And again, this will really make a lot of people happy. If you like the first part, you'll like the second part, okay? So seven hours of that. And towards the dry down, a lot of people are curious about this because you've got tobacco, okay? A lot of people are wondering about that tobacco. It seems like there's tobacco, there's amber, there's woods, there's oak moss. All right here in the dry down, it's pretty big right here. There's a lot of notes right here. And so let me tell you this. The dry down isn't as crazy as the first part of 1907, okay? Let me get that straight. After multiple testing of this fragrance, the dry down is simply an ambery, comforting dry down. That is pretty much it. And that makes sense because from the violet, the amber takes control of the sweetness. And that makes sense because that is the same balanced sensation that you will get from the start to the end of this fragrance, guys. So there's no really strong tobacco note that takes over and changes the dynamic of this fragrance to like tobacco, earthy, and smoky. None of that at all, guys. Matter of fact, the tobacco is really low-key. It blends in very well with the musks to really continue what the cashmere accord uh, does in the mid of this fragrance. Basically, comforting. Comforting is what you get right here, guys. But nevertheless, benzoin, amber, tonka bean, these are the stars of the dry down of 1907. Something you can expect from a lot of Bodicias. This is how their dry downs are. Ultimately, this fragrance, Bodicia the Victorious 1907, in my opinion, does the job in terms of representing Neiman Marcus and its character, its brand of luxury, because from start to finish, this fragrance does have a lot of comforting, spicy, and aromatic notes that really denote luxury you know it's an image of comfort it's the smell of comfort something that somebody who is living a luxurious lifestyle will definitely have something very very comfortable guys but on top of that they made a fragrance that's also in my opinion mainstream appealing in my opinion that pomelo like intro that pink pomelo slightly bitter lemony zesty intro mixed in with that violet this is a standout part of this fragrance will be liked even by mainstream fragrance collectors guys okay because this is something that comes in strong and it lasts like i said very very long into the fragrance okay so definitely for mainstream lovers this is a fragrance that they like for those that like luxury you also get a piece of that in this fragrance right here now this fragrance to me is incredibly unisex it really doesn't lean in any direction in my opinion because this is more about the sensation to me rather than you know will a guy like this or will a girl like this i mean this fragrance has 
components of fruitiness, of musk, of comfort, of amber, you know, and it also has like spices, these low key stealthy spices here uh, that I think it really doesn't matter. It's all about the experience. And that is what this fragrance is about. It's highly unisex. It's more about the experience, not only for the wearer, but for others. Now the total performance for me for Bodicea the Victorious 1907 is 11 hours. And I would say it's most significant scent is up to 10 and then it kind of becomes a skin scent at the 11 hour mark or even the 12 hour mark guys but again make no mistake you got seven hours of basically that really nice first part to the mid part and that's a long coverage right there so your dry down with the amber is gonna be the last maybe three or four hours of this fragrance guys and again this is first impression heavy so if you are into fragrances that you know you want to make a clear really good impression from the get-go make no mistake this is a great fragrance to have still very luxurious but you can see how a lot of the concentration of the ingredients and the notes are placed in the beginning start like seven hours of this fragrance and how the backup part the dry down notes although they're nice are not going to be as strong they're kind of minor and to me based on the testing that's exactly how it uh, turned out now here's a question right here is this fragrance worth the expensive cost it's 695 dollars i mean plus tax you're looking at 700 something for 100 ml okay now of course to those that really can't afford this this would be preposterous and insane but for those that are used to collecting bodicias and fragrances of you know this price bracket in my opinion it's highly worth it but i do suggest that you take the time to get a sample somewhere and try it because i don't know i feel like there are some people that buy luxurious fragrances for the luxury like whether or not they smell great or whether or not they're usable, especially in Bodicea. There's a lot of people that buy Bodicea's just for the novelty of having like a super expensive perfume. I'm going to say this, it's not that, okay? This fragrance does smell expensive, but it is not, you know, going to alienate the mainstream. You will find out that this fragrance is going to be super usable, mainstream lovable. And so it's up to you guys if 695 bucks for a luxurious upscale grabber, um, mainstream lovable scent is going to be worth it, okay? So that's the disclaimer that I'm going to say. But to me, it is a full bottle worthy fragrance. And of course, this type of collabo will really not last that long. I mean, they're not going to make more bottles in my opinion of this. I mean, unless this video gets seen and it turns out to become a hit, <laughs> you know? Neiman Marcus, send me the check. If you know, this is just a limited collabo. I'd say grab at it. I think there's like an affirm like payment plan if you want to do that, guys, of like 60 bucks a month. Uh, go for that, you know. But I think collectability-wise, but more on the usage-wise, this is a full bottle-worthy fragrance. And that is it. That is my no-hype review on the latest Bodicea the Victorious Fragrance 1907, the Neiman Marcus exclusive guys let me know in the comments below what y'all think of this fragrance especially the btv heads who have already tried it does this coincide with what you guys got and if you like bodicea the victorious or if you're curious about the brand you want to find out some unbiased no hype reviews on their fragrances especially with them really selling some very expensive perfumes check out my entire library i've got pretty much the most notable ones the best of them in my library guys okay so that is it thank you very much for watching this video guys i'm back to work please do not forget to like and subscribe we're headed to 20k i'll see you guys on the next video god bless take care peace